Hey guys, welcome back. Oh my gosh, panic. Oh man, HR 127 is going to take all of our guns away. You've got to act now. Please do something to stop HR 127. Guys, I stay in touch with GOA, who stays in touch with representatives in Washington. HR 127 is a dead bill. It has no co-sponsors. It can't even make it to committee. If it can't make it to committee, it's never going to make it to the House floor for a vote. It's a bunch of hype. Unfortunately, a lot of folks within our community are just repeating the hype because one person will freak out and make a video or make a blog post and then people will read that and they'll freak out and won't do their research and find out what's actually going on. GOA will talk to any of us, build a relationship with them and find out what's actually going on in DC. So no, guys, please don't freak out over HR 127. At this moment, there are no bills in Congress that we need to freak out about. We must remain vigilant. We must remain in contact with our representatives, but they don't have the interest or the votes right now in Congress because they want to hold on to their power. They have the thinnest of majorities, the anti-gun forces in the House, and it's a 50-50 split in the Senate. And there will be pro-gun Democrats in the Senate that don't want to lose their seats at midterms because they voted for some wildly anti-gun bill like H.R. 127. Now, all this could change with one national tragedies like Las Vegas. If this administration had been in place during uh, that time, there's a very good chance maybe sweeping gun bans could have taken place. But right now, guys, please don't freak out. Please don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff at re in ridiculously inflated prices. And that's what today's video is about. But we also want to talk about some guns that if you don't currently own one, if you can find it for a good price, pick it up. It doesn't hurt. But please don't overpay. So let's get started with today's video. But before we do, guys, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. A surprisingly small number of you that watch the channel actually take that brief moment just to click that subscribe button. Also comment down below because I look forward to your comments, especially about what I just said. And it also helps us with the algorithms. With all that being said, let's get started with today's video. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. There are a lot of people out there that are becoming first-time gun buyers, and unfortunately, they're doing it in a market that's been hyperinflated for quite some time due to various political wins. First of all, we had the COVID uh, stuff that went down last year at the beginning of 2020. The entire year of 2020 was pretty much just ever-escalating panic buying by the general public. Then we had the election cycle at the end of 2020, and anytime there's an election, there's always a spike again in firearms and ammunition sales. And now we're on the other side of that election and an anti-gun president now sits in the White House who has been promising uh, his constituents that he's gonna make good on his campaign promise to ban guns. Um, he has, if you wanna know what Joe Biden would like to do, just go to his campaign website, just Google or DuckDuckGo if you don't wanna use Google and just look for Joe Biden gun control policies and there's three pages of stuff he wants to do. Will he get that done? Again, I don't think he has the, uh, the capital, the political capital in Congress to do that at the moment, but again, we're just one national tragedy away from that happening. I'm not saying a gun ban can't happen, I'm just saying it's not currently a threat. But because of all that, people that are trying to get into firearms, you know, people are just turning 21 or turning 18 or people that have just recently taken an interest in firearms because of COVID and they want to protect themselves. They're having a hard time buying a gun for a reasonable price. There's a lot of unscrupulous people out there that are really a blight on the 2A community that I call scalpers. These are people that will hang out at their local gun store. They'll see a, a case of ammunition come in or a firearm come in that they know will be popular. They'll buy it at regular prices, they'll immediately take it to a place like Gun Broker and sell it for, you know, a thousand dollars more than it's worth. And they're, they're capitalizing and feeding that endless cycle of panic buying. And those people are disgusting to me. So we need to, to tone it down a little bit. There are good gun shops out there. Um, Copper is a gun store where we do sell rifles like the one you're looking at right here that are at regular market prices. Now, if you go over to Gun Broker, it's going to be significantly higher. 
But if you're going to get into, a, if you want a home defense rifle, if you want you know, a good rifle just to take to the range to plink with, if you want a good rifle to do gun games with, it's really hard to beat the AR-15. And one good AR that we still see coming into copper on a fairly regular basis, it's, it's slowed down because the demand is so high, but the Zion 15 from IWI is manufactured right here in the United States. And it's a full featured AR-15 for a very reasonable price. You're looking at about a thousand bucks or so for a gun like this, if you can find it at a dealer. Now online, the prices are gonna go up, especially if you're dealing with those scalpers I was talking about. But if you take a look at this rifle, it has, has just a very basic feature set, which is a good start. So you have a high quality rifle with high quality parts and you have a good buttstock on it here. You have a B5 uh, type buttstock. You have this vertical pistol grip, which to me is really, really ergonomic. I like it much better than the original A2 grips. On top, we have a Picatinny rail on the receiver that you know dovetails with the rail out here. So you have 19, uh, 13 rail real estate going all the way out to the end of the barrel. We have M-lock all around the barrel for the mounting of accessories. Your very basic fire controls with your fire selector being on one side and your magazine, or I'm mean, sorry, your bolt stop bolt release right there. So it's a really good rifle for the money. Now, another thing that a lot of folks are dealing with right now is the ammunition crisis. And this is something that even dealers are getting stung with right now. Copper Custom can't get ammo at a decent price anymore at a price where Copper can sell ammunition to the customers where the customers aren't upset about the pricing. That's It's trickle-down economics, guys. You're having the, the manufacturers increasing their prices, the manufacturers sell to distributors, distributors jack their prices up because the demand is so high, and then it winds up at the gun shop. The gun shop has to mark it up even more to make money because gun shops aren't in business to give away things. And ammunition's become ridiculously expensive. You can't even find a case of 223 at a gun shop anywhere for a price that's similar to what we had just a year ago. So, um, but there's still scalping of ammunition going on. And you'll find that is going on. It's just as disgusting as the scalping on firearms. Now we're very lucky. We have federal that sports us here at the military arms channel with free ammunition, but we don't get as, get the ammo from federal like we used to. Uh, it's, it's slowed down to a trickle to, or to a stop for the most part. And we're having to work with limited ammunition. So we're only firing 10 rounds per magazine. And I understand that many of you watching this video uh, can't even afford to fire, you know, 10 rounds a magazine right now because of the cost of ammunition. Uh, I see some comments down below in the comment section like, oh my gosh, it's so awful you're out there shooting ammunition. I think you guys forget what we do for a living. If you want to see the videos that you consume for free, we have to fire off our 10 rounds of ammunition. So, the good old Zion 15. Now, a number of my friends have this AR. I think the AR is probably one of the best rifles if you're looking for a new rifle that you can get. Uh, under normal market conditions, ammunition's abundant and, and well-priced, mild recoil, great accuracy, uh, good distance, and you can use it for a, a multitude of, of different purposes. Very nice shooting gun. And yeah, if you're looking for an AR-15, don't overspend, shop around, typically at your local gun store, and see if you can pick something like this up. It's a very, very nice rifle, and there's other rifles in the same class, like BCM, Daniel's Defense, stuff like that, that you can still pick up and do so for a fairly reasonable price. Now let's take a look at some other guns, some that are a little bit more unconventional, but at today's panic buying prices are still quite reasonably priced, a little unorthodox, but they're still good firearms. Let's take a look at one of them. This rifle showed up on the market a couple of years ago, and originally it showed up as a parts kit, then a couple of different companies started manufacturing them as complete firearms. Markomar is the company that manufactured this one, and we've recently been down to check out their facilities because they're right here in Indiana, and uh, we, we checked out their manufacturing. They have robotic welding. They're manufacturing uh, all the furniture, pistol grip, butt stock, hand guard, uh, they're recreating it. And if you take a look at this next to the original stuff, which I've had the opportunity to do, you simply can't tell it apart. They're manufacturing the receivers, the cocking tubes now, um, all the hardware for the, the, uh, the hand guards, the barrels, and they're talking about, depending on how the political climate goes, uh, ultimately being able to make this entire rifle 
in-house. It's a very well-made gun, and it's a little bit different. This gun served in the Spanish military during the Cold War. It replaced the Setme C, which was their 308 version that HK licensed for the German Army, which we know as the HK-91. But this gun's a little bit different, quite a bit different, uh, internally, and we won't get into all that. Maybe in a future video we will. But it uses a roller delay system. It's very similar to the HK-33, but still different. Again, we'll talk about in a later video. But it has a charging handle right here. You do not have the capability of rotating it up into a locking recess like you would on an HK. But back here on the rear sight tower, you have a little button. And this little button can be used to lock the bolt to the rear and release it. So you pull the bolt to the rear, push the button. That locks the bolt uh, to the rear. You can push your non-reciprocating charging handle forward and the rifle's ready to fire. Very interesting gun. Probably one of the softest shooting guns you'll find out there. The recoil impulse on this thing is just amazing. And I've really started to enjoy shooting these rifles quite a bit. They're accurate. Uh, they're, you know, reliable. You will have to use some M193 ball for the first 500 rounds or so. And then after that, I've been able to shoot 223 out of them. The original military rifles uh, used really, really hot 556, but the guys over at Markamar have figured out the, the uh, locking angles and stuff to make it work even with 223. But it does favor the warmer stuff still. You have a rear sight in this rear sight tower, front sight up here. And yeah, it's actually really solidly built. It's small, it's lightweight. And there's a bunch of different models available. This is the rifle model. They make one that has a Stenag optics mount, so you can get like a Henselt scope that would normally be mounted on an HK type firearm. Bolt that right on there. Uh, you have the LC, which they're running out of parts for, but it has the collapsible stock. And so there's a number of different variations. You can get them in green, which is the original military color. You can get them in black. You can get them with the pick rail out here, so you can put regular optics on it, like red dot sights and magnified optics. Uh, you can even get this thing in gray and black, and that looks really, really sharp. But this is just an outstanding rifle, shoots great, great trigger, and a lot of fun. Now, these things can be had depending on what version you pick up for right around $1,500 or so. Now, they go up as high as $2,000, but that's for guns that have um, you know, different optics mounting capabilities and stuff like that. A base rifle is actually pretty reasonably priced, and because they're just kind of unknown, they represent a really good value on the market right now because people aren't scalping these things and they're not gobbling them up. So it's a really, really good option, uh, option for you guys who are looking for something a little bit different to shoot. And based on what I've seen at the company that manufactures this, it uh, looks like they're gonna be doing it for quite some time. So you might wanna check them out. They have their own magazines, the Set Me L magazines, which are steel, but the guys over at Markramar actually re-engineered the feed angle so that they are optimized to work with regular AR-15 aluminum Stenag magazines. You can still run the Setme mags in here, but you're gonna get the best reliability with the regular old Stenag magazine. Does not lock open on the last shot fired. Just pull the bolt to the rear, push that button, that locks it open. Magazine releases right there. Simply a beautiful rifle and again, a really good value on today's market. The AK is one of those rifles that a lot of people absolutely love. It has a really cool uh, pedigree to it. It's a you know, very iconic looking rifle. But there's something that you should consider when purchasing an AK in today's political climate. Now, the rifle I'm showing you right now is a SAM-5 from Arsenal. It's chambered in 5.56. The reason I have it chambered in 5.56 is because there's something you should be aware of that could happen at any moment without an act of Congress, and that's an executive order can be issued by the President of the United States that would ban the importation of this rifle and ban the importation of the 7.62x39 affordable ammunition under normal conditions with the stroke of a pen. Now, I'm not telling you that to make you go out and panic buy anything. I'm just giving you the facts. Where a law would be required to ban this rifle itself if it were manufactured here in the United States that would have to go through Congress, 
banning the importation of firearms and ammunition is something that presidents have done historically in the past or the ATF has done on its own. It doesn't take an act of Congress to accomplish. So 556, why am I talking about it? Well, 556 is produced domestically. In my research, there's only about three different companies that manufacture 762 by 39 and I'm not aware of any companies right now currently manufacturing 545 by 39 you have Winchester that manufactured some ammunition, 762 by 39 some ball and some soft point. You have Federal, which manufactures ball ammunition, but some rifles just don't like brass cased ammo, but they manufacture it here domestically. And then you have Hornaday, and Hornaday off and on manufactures it, but primarily with bullets like the SST, which are intended for hunting. It's not really something you go out and plink with because it's expensive even under normal market conditions. Now, Zestava is supposed to be bringing in some rifles, in, again, in, in 5.56, so there should be uh, rifles on the market. The Sam 5 that I'm holding here is one of those you know rare birds that Arsenal will bring in a handful of and then uh, release them slowly over time and they go for stupid prices when they release but there are other rifles out there now should a ban on the ammunition the 762 by 39 if they should ban the import of that through executive fiat you will probably see companies spin up production but it's going to be more expensive to purchase the ammunition that's produced domestically but if you have a rifle chambered in 556 once those market prices come back down and the panic buying stops you're going to have a rifle that shoots an affordable caliber 223 out of a rifle like this is generally more accurate than a 762 by 39 rifle as well. The same is true as the 545 AKs. So it's something to consider. Then I would also expect the U.S. market, companies like Kalashnikov USA, Palmetto State Armory, um, maybe Riley Defense and other companies uh, to step up and to start manufacturing 556 AKs should there be an import ban on the 762 by 39 or the 545 by 39. So it's just something to be aware of. I'm not saying run out and panic or any of that. There's no talk of it at the moment, but it could happen at any moment. So when you're looking at AK, maybe check out those new Zestavas when they drop and uh, pick up a 5.56 AK. They're actually quite fun to shoot, and it's kind of nice having ammunition uh, compatibility with my other rifles. Now, the downside to rifles like this in 5.56 are the magazines vary wildly from one model to the next. So you're going to have to buy magazines specifically, typically, for your 5.56 AK. The SAM-5 is machined and is just an absolutely beautiful work of art. It has the accessory rail on the side. And, yeah, I really love the Bulgarian machined rifle. Very, very gentle in terms of recoil as compared to the 762 by 39 counterparts. I absolutely love 5.56 8Ks. I've been shooting them since I was a kid with the early Chinese imports. Very, very cool and something to consider. It's a little bit different now, the ordinary. One class of firearms that a lot of folks online will poo poo is the pistol caliber carbine like this KR9 from Kalashnikov USA. And this is a pretty much one for one direct copy of the Russian Vichez submachine gun. It chambers 9mm, and I'm showing you the rifle version of it for a very specific reason. Now again, I'm not telling you to panic. I'm not aware of anything currently happening in Washington, D.C. that would change anything. But these are offered as pistols. You get them with triangle side folding braces from SB Tactical. But as we already know, as we saw happen right around election time, ATF was in the process of taking braces away. And a lot of people out there believe it's just an you know, it, again, we're talking about executive fiat. A lot of people believe that Biden will just order the ATF to ban them through executive fiat using the precedent that President Trump set when he banned bump stocks doing the exact same thing. They can they can ban braces. And so that's just something you might want to be aware of. I still have braced pistols and use them quite frequently. But if you're a new gun buyer, if you're looking at the KR9, you may just want to take a look at the rifle version of it if you're concerned with any future bans of braces. Me, I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna continue doing what I do. But this 
is an actual rifle, has a 16 inch barrel. This is a fake suppressor. The Vichez has a hinging top cover on it, much like the AKS 74U, which some people call the Krinkov. And so it has that hinged top cover, but on top of it, we have a pick rail so you can put optics on it. It does have a side folding metal triangular stock and they're really, really tight. <laughs> See if I can pop this baby loose. There we go. I need to oil it up. I shoot my SBR. I have one of these as an SBR, but they, uh, they have a triangular side folding stock on them. And really, really cool guns. Again, I love AKs. I love how they look. And the Vitches is one of those things that I've really enjoyed. Now, there are a number of things out there that people call PCCs, pistol caliber carbines. We call them PCFs, pistol caliber firearms. And there's other guns out there in this same class, a lot of them, and the prices are range from very affordable, from like high point carbines, which are actually really good guns for the money, all the way up to something like a BNT, which is going to cost you, you know, quite a bit more money. This will fall somewhere in between in terms of cost. Now, when I picked this one up, they had a deal where you could get five magazines and a drum and the gun for a very reasonable price. I forget what that price was, but I wanted to get a rifle version of it that I could take across state lines and stuff and not have to worry about my SBR and the paperwork that's associated with it. But for a nine millimeter PCF, it's just a really, really good option. But again, there's plenty of other firearms in this same class out there that you can pick up and use. You can fire these on indoor ranges that might not allow center fire uh, rifle cartridges. Uh, typically in normal market conditions, nine millimeter is readily available and, and plentiful. It makes a great suppressor host. It's going to be much more quiet than any center-fired cartridge out there. So there's a lot of reasons to shoot and use a 9mm uh, rifle like this. It's even good for home defense or personal defense if you need it for that role. So check them out if you don't have one and you're looking for a fun gun to shoot. This one operates just like an AK, so it has the big safety on the side. It uses its own proprietary magazine. And it's just a simple blowback design. <laughs> what's funny is right out of the box these sights were on and that was a target that's a little over 100 yards away that it was hitting fun guns very mild recoil impulse easy to maintain and yeah currently available on the market you can pick them up at your local gun shop if you go to gun broker you're going to overpay for it so to kind of wrap up today's video guys there are firearms out there they're still reasonably priced this is not one of them and you can pick them up at your local gun stores. You don't have to go into places like gun broker, auction sites, or internet forums to pay way too much money for things. If you're patient and you hang out at your local gun shops, you check in fairly frequently or give them phone calls, you can find out what their inventory is and pick something up for a normal price. Don't take part in the panic buying because you're just feeding the whole machine. It's going to continue to happen as long as we continue to play it. And so please stop playing that game. That's part of the message of this video. Also, I'm not saying a gun ban cannot happen. It most certainly can happen. We just need, need to be uh, vigilant. What we don't need to do is freak out over things like H.R. 127, which isn't going anywhere. It's a dead bill offered by a lunatic that's written legislation like that for decades, and it never even makes it to committee, and this bill is no different. It has no co-sponsors. It's not even in committee, which means it can't go for a vote. Now. Again, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying right now is not the time to be concerned with it. But please stay in regular communication with your senators. And what I highly recommend you do, and your congressman, I highly recommend you go by the Gun Owners of America's website, sign up for the free email alerts. They're not going to blow up your inbox with a bunch of sky is falling emails and give us money so we can stop HR 127 type of stuff. But they're going to give you relative, uh, relative and pertinent information to what's actually going on in D.C., and so please do that. It's free, but I would also urge you to please join the Gun Owners of America because they're one of the few gun rights organizations out there that are zero compromise and they don't spend a bunch of money like Wayne LaPierre buying themselves you know, expensive clothes and flying around on private jets. That's not how they operate. All right, guys, 
I would like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Please pass it around. Please let's bring the, the tone down a little bit about HR 127 and let's stop with the panic stuff. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you content like this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. You can do that by following the link in the video description below. You'll get early access to videos, direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And we've built a magnificent, really wonderful community there of folks who interact with each other on a daily basis. Also, right here on YouTube, there's a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Give that button a click and support us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.